Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. Players often ask, what's a quick way to earn dark side points to get full dark side corruption on my character? I found a couple guides out there, but none of them were up to date, so I did my own research. The most important thing to know first off is that pretty much any activity in the game will grant you dark side points if you have the dark side symbol chosen in the alignment toggle near your minimap. Popular activities that players like to jump into to earn dark side points include PvP and war zones, leveling, flashpoints, operations, and dailies, and all of these will naturally award dark side points if you have dark side clicked on your toggle. When you're looking around for ideas, players often suggest that you run flashpoints, especially the Imperial Black Talon and the Republic Esley's flashpoints, which can be accessed very early in the game. While these two flashpoints are great for earning social points, they're not nearly as fast for earning dark side points. When running flashpoints, while you will get a few extra dark or light points from the cutscenes, in my case I only got 330 at the very end of the mission for choosing the two dark side options during the cutscenes, a majority of your dark side points will come from enemies, which are worth 4 points each, including bosses, so if you're a stealther, make sure you aren't skipping the enemies. These points can be earned from defeating enemies from any type of content, so there's no longer any need to run just flashpoints. You can run pretty much any type of content where you defeat enemies. So you could be running dailies, you could be running your class story and get some bonuses from choosing dark side options during your class story. Heroics with lots of enemies around are a good option as well. Pretty much anything where you can quickly defeat enemies that are weak so you don't have to worry about too many strong ones slowing you down. So to give Flashpoint some context compared to other missions, on my level 75 character, running any heroic or any daily quest was giving me 130 dark side points per normal mission, whereas running the Flashpoint gave me 330 for completing the mission because I did those bonus dark side choices in the cutscenes. A lot of heroics and dailies can be quite fast, where going through the full run of a Flashpoint can take quite a while. However, if you're willing to jump into PvP, that's player versus player matches in war zones and arenas, they are a great, great way to earn dark side points. Unlike flashpoints or any other content where you're playing against a computer, you don't get any points from defeating other players. Instead, at the end of the match, you'll either get a flat 1000 or 1500 dark side points, which you can see pop up on the leaderboard. To give some comparison, you would have to kill 250 different enemies to get the same amount of points as you would in a single war zone. If you're getting that lower rate of 1000 dark side points per match, you would only need to run 100 matches to go all the way from dark side 0 to dark side 5. Add in about 130 points you get from completing the daily quests, and PvP is a good recipe for dark side points, while queuing up crafting in between matches, which we'll talk about next. When players talk about raising their dark side points, they will often mention the crew skill called Diplomacy. There have been some important changes to the game that you need to know about if you are using crafting to increase your dark side points. The most important thing to know is that all crew skills, all gathering skills, all crew skills, give dark or light side points based on your alignment toggle. But Diplomacy is still the best to gain dark side or light side points, however it's the most complicated. So if you're using a basic crew skill like scavenging, you'll earn more dark side points depending on the grade of your mission, and you can see how many you'll get by rolling over the dark or light side symbol on the left hand side of the mission. The grade is the only thing that matters, it doesn't matter the color of the mission, like whether it's orange or grey, so it makes sense to send out your companions even if you don't have any high grade missions available. If you have any level 700 gathering skill, with access to Grade 11 gathering missions apart from Diplomacy. Every time you send out a full round of companions, you'll get about 8,000 dark side points. With 8 companions at influence level 50, each of these missions take about 6 to 13 minutes each. You need to send your companions out about 100 times to go from neutral all the way to dark side 5, and it'll take you about 13 hours worth of mission time and about 3 quarters of a million credits, so it's not meant to be done overnight. This is why it's great to combine it with other activities. For example, you could queue up your crafting missions between PvP matches. Or, if you're doing easier content, for example, solo flashpoints, you could even queue up your companions as you're playing the flashpoint and defeating enemies. Now let's talk about Diplomacy. Diplomacy is a bit different. Each mission naturally leans towards the dark side or light side, even if the icon beside the quest shows dark side. 
you'll need to hover your mouse over the dark side symbol and see what dark and light points it rewards. Some missions reward pure dark side points, and these missions reward more dark side points than missions from any other crew skill. However, some missions reward a mix of light and dark, and sending your companion out on these missions may even wind up with you accidentally getting light side points instead. So I did some research, here are the 8 missions you'll want to send your 8 companions out on. They'll be on the grade 10 and grade 11 lists. You'll want to send your companions out on A Wanderer's Gifts Friends in Low Places Strained Negotiations and Uncivil War and ignore the rest of the missions. And you'll get about 1,600 dark side points per round, which is a lot more than the other crew skills. But you have to spend time choosing the missions from the grade 10 and grade 11 lists. So in short, if you're interested in PvP, do that and queue up crafting in between. And if you're not interested in PvP, pretty much any activity that completes a quest quickly and you can defeat extra enemies with is a great choice. I hope this breakdown of the ways to earn dark side points was very useful to you and I hope you're able to get the dark side corruption that you're looking for. If you want to see what dark side corruption looks like at different tiers and on different species, I've got a separate video out called Dark Side Corruption which also gives a basic breakdown of how it works. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. And as always, may the dark side of the force be with you.